Okay, question seven is a 25 marker. Um, and so I'm going to use a standard structure that I would for a 25 marker. Two topics. Um, an evaluation paragraph for each of the topics. So each of these topics is going to be broken into two paragraphs. One is going to be a knowledge application analysis paragraph, and then an evaluation paragraph. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to do a judgment slash conclusion. So um, the question says the national living wage, the minimum wage for 25 year olds and over is expected to rise to more than 10 point five pounds an hour in 2024 compared with uh, £8.72 in 2020. The wage does not apply to UK self-employed and gig economy workers. Some economists say the increase is ambitious. Business groups warn that um, employers in sectors such as social care could be hit hard. In large parts of the north of England, the living wage has already reached two-thirds of local median earnings, said Professor Shackleton. Evaluate the disadvantages of a significant increase in national living wage on a specific labor market, such as social care workers. So I could take my pick here of different sectors. I'm going to go for hospitality, so sort of restaurants and hotels um, for no particular reason, just because that's what I've decided to pick. Um, because of the way the questions phrase, because it says evaluate the disadvantages, I'm going to want to pick two disadvantages of an increase in the national minimum wage for my topic A and topic B. Whereas maybe for other topics, I might think about um, maybe doing topic A as like the advantages and topic B is the disadvantages. Because they've asked us specifically to focus on disadvantages, I'm gonna pick two. And I'm gonna pick, uh, let's say, unemployment slash layoffs. Um, and I might say, harms to financial stability of firms in the market. For the unemployment slash layoffs point, I'm always looking for definitions, a diagram, analysis, and evidence as the core parts of my KAA paragraph. Um, in this context, evidence is going to take the form of diagrams and any examples I can come up with because we don't have um, the extracts for these 25 markers. Um, the diagram I think here that makes the most sense is the minimum wage diagram that shows an excess of supply. And basically that's showing that you're gonna create a level of unemployment when you raise the minimum wage because demand for work will decrease. Um, and so the analysis is like, if we increase uh, the minimum wage, then employers may no longer be able to afford to employ as many staff um, because the minimum wage may exceed the marginal revenue product of some workers. Uh, you know, therefore, we will have unemployment for those workers. That's the sort of the crux of the argument. Um, the evidence for that, I mean, I might think like, I might reference lower skilled workers, uh, lower skilled workers like cleaners may have a low uh, P. So maybe they're not bringing in um, enough money basically to justify their wage. Some work such as receptionist or concierge work. Um, may be possible to automate. So this is the other factor I'll bring into this is um, there may be some areas of hospitality that can be automated, like those QR codes that you can scan in restaurants so you don't necessarily need as many wait staff to come to your table. So things like that might be more appealing if you're increasing the cost of uh, the minimum wage because then you're increasing the opportunity cost associated with um, employing, like you're, you're decreasing the, you're increasing the opportunity cost associated with employing those workers. Um, so it becomes more appealing to automate because you're putting up the prices for those workers. Um, in terms of definitions, I am probably going to want to talk about maybe defining something like excess supply, 
right? Price ceiling or price floor, um, stuff like that, price elasticity of demand. And I think what we want to highlight in the evaluation is it depends the degree of layoffs depends on the price elasticity of demand for, for labor in this sector, which is itself informed by the ease of automation, uh, availability of substitutes, and the, um, the uh, sort of revenue brought in by workers. So I might highlight that maybe there are some positions in hospitality that will be more secure than others because they have different price elasticities of demand. We're still going to get an excess supply, but if we have a situation where um, we have a really sort of high price elasticity of demand, that can mean that a lot of that is actually due to um, workers being more willing to work, and that's why you've got the excess supply, as opposed to because there's more jobs being sort of cut through layoffs. Um, and then we could do price stability of firms. My diagram here is going to be cost and revenue curves. And I'm going to show rising average variable costs. Um, my definitions here, I like might define average variable costs, fixed costs. Um, I might talk about um, like market structures, maybe. Like we could say hospitality is pretty price competitive, so it's going to be harder for firms to put up their, um, their prices, and therefore you're squeezing the profit margins. And again, we're trying to make this specific to a sector, so I think um, that would be good in terms of analyzing this particular sector and saying like they don't have price setting power basically um so no price setting power because this is not is a competitive market strokes the profit margins get squeezed as labor we've got to connect it to labor markets remember too so as labor is um Derived demand, comma, reduced demand for restaurants when prices may go up would reduce demand for labor in labor markets. Um, and then my evaluation, um, uh, Terms of financial, so you, I might say something like it increases labor, could increase labor productivity, and the overall skill level of the workforce. If wages are more motivating, something like that. Um, so maybe we're counterbalancing the increased costs from the firm's perspective with more motivated employees. Um, we might also say. Overall increases in the minimum wage might also drive up demand for hotels and restaurants. So maybe some of this is offset by the increasing demand that we would expect when, in general, people's wages are higher. Um, in terms of judgment and conclusion, I might say um, this is likely to be harmful for the service, the hospitality industry, because, um, because we're specifically dealing with um, an industry where it's tough to put up prices. Because of the price elasticity of demand, um, therefore, automation is more likely, um, and we are likely to see layoffs.
in the short term before uh, demand picks up in the long ter long term as general wages rise in the economy. Right, so maybe we're also I'm working in like a long term short term component to this, where I'm saying, you know, immediately we're going to have to pay workers more, and there's probably going to be a bit of a delay, because a lot of spending habit as low spending is habitual. There'll be a bit of delay before we see maybe an uptick in demand in the market, and that means uh, probably we're going to automate or we're going to lay off some workers and try and make do with less on the worker front. 